Hey folks. Uh, so over the weekend, I had the opportunity to finish writing up and formatting uh, all the suggestions for tweaks to the War Thunder economy. Um, and I've, I've already sent this off to the snail. And I, I want to apologize for my voice. I'm, I'm kind of sick at the moment. But uh, I wanted to do a quick video talking about this document. And there's a link in the description and a pinned comment. Uh, you can just directly download the PDF. I'm not going to go through the whole thing and spend another hour. The majority of it is either the same as what I covered in um, the previous like hour-long video, or it's extremely similar. I'm only going to talk, I'm going to spend a few minutes in this video just going over what's new or significantly different. Um, I started off the document with some acknowledgments that I'm coming at this from the point of view of someone who mainly plays air and a bit of ground without really any naval, uh, that all of this should be the starting point for like discussions on, you know, how to move forward with this. It shouldn't be interpreted as like a, a final, you know, this is how it should be. Um, and obviously some of this would need tweaking for different game modes. I, I called out like ground arcade as an example of something that, you know, these suggestions would need to be tweaked for. Um, I started off with a section on current economic pain points for players. Um, this is where I identified the problems that these suggestions are looking to resolve. Then I had an entire page of, uh, I called it critical observations. This is stuff that I suspect Gaijin already knows, but I thought it was important to mention it just so that someone has said this and so that they know that we know, okay? Um, I'm not going to go through all this, but there's one point I want to mention because I haven't really touched on it before. Um, matches in most War Thunder game modes are a net drain on the Silver Lion's economy. Uh, in the economics world, this is what we would call the M0 money supply. This is the total amount of Silver Lions that all players across all of their accounts have all added together. All right, however, you know, there's like, I don't, I'm just going to make up a number. Let's say there's like 4 billion Silver Lions total in the War Thunder economy floating around on player accounts. Every time that there is a, a match in most game modes, that total amount of Silver Lions goes down a little bit instead of up. And the, the short explanation, uh, maybe I'll, I'll do another video at some point going over the math, but the short explanation is that the total cost of all the repair bills is greater than the total amount paid out as rewards to all the players in that same match. And I, I go into some more details about, like, why mathematically that happens. Um, I also point out, again, how vehicle repairs shouldn't ever be based on player statistics. That's fundamentally dumb. Um, and I pointed out how the current economic model seems structured to penalize poor performance, penalize average performance, and penalize good performance all in different ways. Um, and that there's a perception among the player base that the punitive structure is deliberate. Next, I went into the suggestion for implementing reserve vehicles at higher tiers, uh, implementing an equilibrium sort of a baseline um, for rewards, the dramatic BR decompression, um, vehicle caps by team, and then I came to a new one. Uh, this is to remove requirements for vehicle purchase in a tech tree. Now, I couldn't figure out really how else to phrase this. But right now, in order to purchase a tech tree vehicle, in addition to unlocking it through research points, you have to buy it for Silver Lions, right? Well, that's not enough. You need to purchase every vehicle before it in its line of the tech tree before the game will let you purchase it for Silver Lions. Not just unlock it, but you have to buy it too. And I used an example that in order to buy the M4A3, you have to buy the M22, which if you don't care about the M22, that just increases the effective cost 
of the M4A3 by 6300 Silver Lions. Um, they should remove that requirement. It, all it does is it has a net effect of forcing players to spend an enormous amount of total Silver Lions to purchase vehicles that they may not care about just so that they can purchase the vehicle they do care about. And that sucks. Next, I had uh, the whole big thing about normalizing repair costs by rank and removing player statistics as a factor. Um, I also threw out another suggestion that they could increase, um, have a bonus reduction to repair cost based on player level. Maybe like a level 50 player could get a 10% reduction, level 100 could get a 20% reduction, and, you know, extrapolate that out over the 100, uh, 100 levels. Um, you know, just might be a nice incentive for people to actually level up. Uh, I had the section talking about how they should focus on increasing rewards rather than adding penalties if they think the economy is ever out of whack. How they should remove any and all caps on rewards. How uh, This one is uh, a little bit new. Um, it's the suggestion to allow the use of backup vehicles to absorb or write off repair costs. So if you have a backup vehicle, you could use that as a repair voucher. Where, um, and I use the example, if a player has an F-100D and they have three backup vehicles assigned to it and they get shot down in a match, they should have the option to lose one of the backups instead of pay the repair cost after the match. Not bad, right? Uh, in addition to providing another slight ease on player costs, it could further motivate players to seek vehicle backups, um, and that could include through monetized options. Um, and I talk about that in detail at the end. Um, then I went on to talk about uh, reducing RP in all game modes across the board, and this was another slightly uh, additive suggestion here where they could provide an RP boost, again, based on player level. Like, give your player level as an RP boost. Like, if you're level 100, you could get a 100% bonus to all of your RP earned, basically just doubling your, your research points. If you're level 14, you could get a 14% bonus. You know, um, that would incentivize players to actually go up in rank, and it would make it a lot easier for experienced players who've been around for a while to research a new tech tree. Uh, then I talked about how they really just need to increase the rewards in helicopters. Simple. Um, I gave them the example they should just boost the RP rewards by a factor of 10. Um, and I, you know, there's no way right now in any of the game modes to efficiently grind RP hour over hour. Rather than trying to reinvent the wheel and come up with new game modes, just dramatically increase the RP rewards when you're in a helicopter. Easy mode. So the last part of the document is, I think, the most important. This is where I have the suggestion to entirely rethink the monetization paradigm of the game. I talk about how right now the emphasis seems to be on monetizing the pain points presented at the beginning of this document where they're trying to make money off players being frustrated and mad. That sucks. That's a major contributor to resentment, anger, burnout, and frustration. Players get the impression that their frustration is an intended monetization factor uh, for the game, and uh, they don't like that. What do you know? Um, I point out how monetizing player pain points can sometimes be an effective paradigm, but it's not the only effective monetization paradigm. Um, I talk about how the current economy and the monetization paradigm uses what's called a negative feedback loop, where players monetize into the game when they're frustrated, depressed, or angry, and it feels like they have no other choice because paying in is the only way to progress. Instead, the focus should be on a positive feedback loop where players monetize into the game and they're excited and happy about the bonuses and rewards they get. I mean, think about this for a second. Why on earth do you want your customers to be sad, angry, or resentful when they give you money? 
What? That's ludicrous. That's incredibly bad business sense. Um, instead, you want your customers to be happy and get some endorphins when they give you money so that they'll do it again. Anyway, um, I pointed out that a lot of free-to-play games use the positive feedback loop monetization model, and they put their focus on creating a positive and exciting player experience rather than excessive monetization of frustration. Now, one of the things that um, they talked about in their previous letter was that, you know, they said only 20% of the player base currently pays for the game in any way. Um, with that in mind, I suggested, again, their focus should be on broadening the base rather than squeezing the whales. And I used exactly that phrase. Um, and focus on rewarding a larger number of players for spending smaller amounts instead of just ramping up the costs on a smaller number of top spenders. Now, with that in mind, I suggested one really good thing for them to do would be to add more value to premium accounts, to premium time in the game. Uh, right now, the cost of a premium account is in between like seven and nine dollars a month, depending on how much you get, um, which is less than the cost of an average MMO subscription. Financially, you know, if you if the only way that you monetize into War Thunder is with a premium account, War Thunder is not an expensive game. You know, if, if that's the only way that you monetize in, it's not expensive that way. Um, however, uh, as I mentioned a couple of times in this document, the, the benefits you get from premium account bonuses are like bare minimum to make the game playable, you know, in like the mid to high tiers for a lot of folks. Um, it's not a big incentive to spend. So it may be a good financial value compared to other games, but it's not a good economic value inside the game itself. Um, and I gave some specific suggestions on how they could improve and incentivize premium accounts so that more players would buy more premium time more often. Consider providing larger bonuses to research points in Silver Lions. That's obvious. Flat across the board discounts to Silver Lion costs for premium accounts. This one I thought was good. Give players who purchase a long-term premium account a free premium pack vehicle rental as an additional perk. For example, one 48-hour vehicle rental, player's choice of the premium vehicles, for players who purchase at least six months of premium account. That might not be bad. If you buy a year's worth of premium and you know you've got a weekend coming up where you're going to have lots of time to grind, you could use your premium perk and unlock the XM1 for the weekend and go grind some American ground tree, you know? Um, I think that would be a really good perk to give premium accounts. Uh, also, um, allow additional vehicle decoration slots, similar to how premium right now gets you de uh, decal slots. A stipend of free Silver Lions per month for players who purchase long-term premium accounts. Better login veteran bonuses every day when you log in on premium time. Um, and I, I also suggested they could think about having different tiers or levels of premium accounts. You know, like right now, the current premium account is like $7 a month. Maybe have a second tier that's 10 and a third tier that's 15. And with those tiers, you know, you get proportionally larger bonuses where instead of like a 250% boost to Silver Lions, you get a 400% boost and then a 700% boost. You, you know, like work out the numbers on it, but um, have multiple levels of premium account at different price points. That would allow people who really want to get serious with the game um, and can afford it to monetize in for a little more, but it would also allow people who may be more casual players to just monetize in for a little bit and still have it worth their worth their money to do so, and and like feel good about what they're getting instead of feeling pissed off because they're never going to get past rank four unless they spend you know two hundred dollars on golden eagles because they just can't 
research vehicles in a reasonable amount of time, and if they could, they couldn't buy them because they're broken silver lions. Um, that's a really crappy way to monetize things. So I gave some suggestions on how they could do it a little bit better. Um, anyway, I've, I've been going for a while. My throat is sore. I'm still sick. Uh, there's a PDF link in the, via, in the video description and down in the pinned comment. You can check out this whole document that I've already sent over to the snail. Um, yeah, this is probably going to be the, the last video I do on this topic until whatever they come out with next month. Because again, I just want to remind folks, this is not a drama channel. I'm just covering some current event stuff because I kind of felt compelled based on what was going on. So as always, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.